Alrighty, so we've let our um, little uh, egg, microwave egg poacher set up. We can turn our, our little mini bowl upside down and see if it fits on top. And so we'll trim this rounded like a dome, or the dome will be this way. And we'll address the foot just a little bit. Um, I'm not going to actually trim a lot. I'm just going to make that a false foot so it stays kind of thick. Uh, we have our bat that's got some lines kind of visible on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn our piece upside down. Kind of adjust just a little bit to where we, we think it's going to be. Finger in the middle and our pinky on the outside and our finger on the tool, we're going to be able to scratch a very, very, very faint line to be able to see where we need to go. So if we look at the thickness of the exterior um, rim, that is a lot thinner than what it is over here. So what happens is, just like when we're making our bed and the blanket is wrong and the blanket's shorter on one side than the other, we pull the blanket towards that side. So that's what we're gonna do. This here is shorter, this is thicker. The thickest spot is always directly across from the thinnest spot. So if you find the thinnest spot and the thickest, they're gonna be directly across one another. So we're gonna move in that motion. don't want that line that we made to be so deep in the surface of the clay that we can't just erase it with our finger. So we're going to put our hand back on in the center and check again. And now we should be fairly even. take our little slugs of clay, north, south, east, and west. Remember, we're gonna put our hand on top. We don't want it to move. We're gonna wrap the clay slightly around, just a little, and then push halfway. Twist and do it again. Sometimes if you make your slug long enough, you only have to do three points. You don't have to do four. I'm a little bit longer on that. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna trim slow speed. And we had a little bit of a detail on that with our ribs, so I'm gonna do just a little adjusting. And I'm gonna make sure that I keep that So on the outside, I'm going to move inward just like a record. And then when I get to the center, I'm going to stop. As soon as the clay's moving away here and at me. So if my tool is here, I'm scraping and scraping away. Once I get here, it's going to push my tool at me and I'm going to gouge it. So I don't want to do that. So sometimes you'll see the tool will actually be over halfway point, but the point of contact from tool to clay is not over. So my tool is actually there, but the point of contact is actually right on that very center part. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Even though I'm creating this little ledge here it's not going to be uh, glazed underneath it's not deep enough it's really more just aesthetic 
just so there's not and just so there's not so much actually touching your table. You don't need all that clay, that thick mass of clay just chunking on everything. want to trim all of this off and make it a dome. And then we'll add a little handle. You can throw a handle on the top of this if you'd like. Or you can pull a little dog bone handle. I'm going to come back and smooth all this off. to making the handle next. All right, so we're gonna move on to making the handle. I rolled out a thick coil and cut each piece one inch length. So they should have approximately the same amount of clay in them. And we'll make two handles, one on either side and then one for the top. So when you're trying to make two handles that are going on either side, um, it's best to do each step together. If I make this complete and then have to start over with this one, I might not do it exactly. So if I roll in the center on this one, I'm gonna roll in the center on this one. We'll just do all three. should all be close to the same. Right? So it's like pulling a handle, but I'm only pulling the center, kind of with my thumb. part of my palm of my hand. Just 
they start to look more like a little bit of a bow tie. want it to stand up. gnarly and add a couple of drops of water and then I'm just gonna muck that around a little bit just make it mucky it makes slip on the surface with the actual clay that you're using no need for magic water making these lines as a design you can tell where you're supposed to start your handle or where your handle should go you don't have to line it all the way up around and be like eh, did it is it in did I get it right I'm not trying to mark on the outside because once I put my, once I score and slip, I don't want to see that mark line. So I, I try to do it on the inside or scoot in underneath just a little bit. sponge or a regular sponge. If you're using a regular sponge, just make sure you're not wiping away too much of the clay. Sometimes they can be a little abrasive and especially if you have um, a clay body that has a higher grog content, which means that that sandy stuff in there that feels kind of gritty, uh, 
you'll, you'll wipe away the smooth, finer particles and you'll be left with, um, and you'll be left with just the, the rough particles kind of on the edge, which might not be what the aesthetic that you're looking for. all your spots on your handle too on the lid the only thing left to do is to just poke a little hole for venting and you are good to go